is it's another Friday, and unfortunately, as is the case in 2020, really not that much has happened this week except for fucking politics, and I'm not, I'm just not I can't bother because. If you don't know, here's here's the breaking news for this week. If you're listening after the after the Civil War, uh, maybe this is one of the the, the starting moments because this kid in whatever the fuck state, whatever the fuck city, whatever the fuck riot, uh, shoots a pedophile who was coming at him with a gun, and now they're looking to press. I think they've already arrested him because he he fled the state or something. So now they're they're doing a a manhunt for him. They're gonna try and charge him with first degree premeditated murder, and uh, I guess they're uh, someone. Uh, I think I think that state has the death penalty for first degree murder. So they're gonna kill him if they can. Didn't flee. Well, that's what they're saying. They uh, are claiming that he left the state in order to evade justice. So that's what I mean. Isn't could be wrong. Could be. Uh, Wisconsin does not have the death penalty. Oh, great. Excellent. So he's looking to 25 to life. No parole. See what I mean? That's, that's, that's the, the buffet for, for this week. The only, thing, the only thing I have to keep my spirits high is, uh, is my video games. And unfortunately for me, even that, even that has been completely subverted, has been ruined. <laughs> I, can't, I can't look forward to anything because of shit like this. I'll just pull up the uh, the message. Right, look, feast your eyes, feast your eyes on this. This is I can't pronounce this fucking name. Um, I'm not even gonna bother. But he's a paradox developer for Crusader Kings Three. Uh, he's trying to get. He said in, in uh, a Reddit post for trans, which is like that's how it's written. It's like tr- trans with like eight A's and three N's and two S's. Uh, he's trying to get rid of chuds on his Twitter profile. This might do the trick. Trans rights are human rights. Capitalism is a disease, he says, as a as a programmer for a for-profit company. And, I mean, I assume it's for-profit, considering how many fucking DLCs Paradox releases every goddamn year. Uh, you have nothing to lose but your chains, and action is complicit complicity. Unionized today, the inclusion of marginalized people in the video games is a good thing. I'm one of the I'm one of those weirdos. I like I like games like War Fortress and Space Station 13 and Crusader Kings 2. The Crusader Kings 2 is too normy for me really. I like uh EU4, which is the much more autistic brother of Crusader Kings. And this guy is on that team which explains why a game called Crusader Kings which is about the crusades is removing the language Deus Vault entirely from from Crusader Kings 3. Just completely uh dumping ass on that on that franchise because it's I I don't know. I'm assuming they're going to make the Muslim religions really strong and make the, the Nordic religions really strong. Well, I don't know. The Nordic religions are the most white supremacist religions. You got to got to <laughs> you got to nerf those. And uh I don't know. Make the Hindu religion strong for CK3. Trans Vault. There we go. That's a cause I can get behind. That's sanctioned. Try RimWorld. I played RimWorld. Of course I pre- played RimWorld. Uh, RimWorld isn't as sticky to me as EU4 is. I have like thousands of hours in EU4. Um, I've played everything in that game. But I'm not very good at it. <laughs> the one game... The one... the. I had not played Im- Imperator Rome, um, which I've heard is awful, and I can believe it. Um, Parad- yeah, Paradox has just gone to shit recently, and they're hiring fucking retards like this to, to make their games, so I can only imagine why. If I ever made a company, it would be a rule. It would be a high rule that if you say anything retarded on social media, I, I just get to fire you entirely. Um, but chances are this was a great a great thing to the PR people. And okay, just to clarify, the guy I was talking about, this is um Kyle Rittenhouse is his name. I'm pretty sure this is what I was talking about. For, yeah, this is this has to be the guy. Because the person he shot was a sex offender who wasn't supposed to be around minors, and the joke is that a seventeen year old, a minor, shot him. So um 
he he was a sex offender who had aggressed towards children. I think as young as five, um, was killed by a minor, which is uh, sort of mimetic. But he's a fugitive from justice. I don't know if he turned himself in or what, but he fled the state of Wisconsin with the intent to avoid persecution of that offense. Um, there's no way, like, I don't know. Maybe when Nick was talking about the cop from the, the I Can't Breathe guy, I already forgot his name. How did I forget his name? Oh, George Floyd. In that case, Nick was talking about how the second-degree murder charge would be harder to prove than the third-degree murder charge. And going for a higher charge is a good way to get the case thrown out entirely in in the um in the trial. So maybe maybe him being charged with first degree murder is um is to his benefit. Though I don't know. They're going to claim that he w- took a weapon to this protest with the intent of killing someone there. That would that would satisfy the premeditation. Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm already bumming myself out. And I I've tried I try not to. I I tr- I look away. I look away. Uh, and then try to be a happy boy, but I don't know. Uh, the uh, only thing that Shoddy has done that I saw that was funny was that she said that she didn't fetishize black people because she had a Serbian boyfriend crush when, or not a boyfriend, but a Serbian crush when she was in school, which is kind of funny because I was just in Serbia. Uh, and Chantal is just so fucking gross. I can't even watch her anymore. She's, she has like gone off the deep end into fetishizing how disgusting she is she can't everything she eats is sloppy and disgusting she burps into the mic she farts into sh- and just just a, a horrible disgusting obese cow making as much noise as possible so that's another joy stripped from me uh and amberlyn i don't know amberlyn has high points but most of her shit is like really low like her her average is below below um what what most other people's are because all she likes to do is film herself buying like have you ever gone to like a dollar store or a walmart and you look at like the cheap shit they sell on some of the aisles that you're thinking like what is this what is this one dollar lampshade appeal to who is buying this garbage to keep it profitable enough to to have these shelves dedicated to stocking this fucking garbage. And the answer is Amberlynn Reed, and people like her. For some reason, she likes to go and spend literally hundreds of dollars a week shopping for utter fucking trash that she later has to throw out because it's completely useless, cheap garbage. And that's that's most of her videos, is her going to Walmart at 3 a.m. where fewer people are around to witness her being a a dumpster a dumpster diver uh and here there's a clip that i'm i'm being forced to play this is of chantel uh, and it's called sloppy joe mukbang i'm already i'm already not too eager for this one can i let me bring up firefox all right we'll we'll suffer through this together no i don't want Really? When has it been doing this? When has YouTube been asking me to sign in? Fuck you, YouTube, you motherfucker. No, I... Fuck. Go oh, away. There we go. Why can't I hear it? Can you guys hear it? No, you guys can't hear it. Oh, that's a mistake. Let's see. Oh, fun. There it is. Wait. Can you guys hear it? No, you can't. Oh my god. How embarrassing. That. Please meter input. Here we go. Hello, foodie beauties. <laughs> oh, I don't have the timestamp. That's the important part. This fucking YouTube wanted me to sign in. No, I'm not signing in. You want me to eat your. Does she mouth the word pussy? That, is that it? Is that the entire timestamp? See what I mean? This is so aw- I can't stand it. I've got I've got the most sensitive boy ears in the world, and I'll tell you a disgusting story. Um, at one point, I was sitting there at my computer, and I was thinking to myself, you know, my ears are not as sensitive as they used to be. 
I should clean my ears. I swear, I swear to God, I pulled three like like blobs out of my ear it, it, because it has a shape because it's like a tunnel. Your ear is like a tunnel. I pulled out three blobs in the shape of like a nine millimeter bullet out of out of two in one ear and one in the other. And now my boy ears are even more sensitive than you can possibly imagine. I can hear everything, and that's not a good thing because I'm already at like a level of of audio audio hell lis- listening to this shit and now I'm, I'm on some other level of acuteness i'm like an alien with with my sixth sense being super massive hearing and and whatever yes if he could he wanted if i wanted him to eat my kitty cat All right, that took me off guard, okay? Because back then, I know you're looking at me now. I'm thinking. There's no way you can get up in that because you're so fat. You would kill somebody if you sat on their face today. But like I said, back then I wasn't this size. But even now, if a guy wanted me to sit on it, on his face, I would. I mean, it has happened when I was near this size. I don't believe you. Okay, here's here's a fun fact here's, about Chantal. I don't I don't know why she does this. I don't because she's like a teenage boy. And and how she brags about her lays. Like, she goes off about how everyone hits on her. Every guy wants to fuck her. She has all these casual encounters. And, like, okay, she's eating a Sloppy Joe, and I'm pretty sure this is a story about a guy nicknamed Sloppy Joe. And it just sounds like utter and complete bullshit every fucking time. And that she just comes with, up with on the spot and then says something gross. And she started doing this shit with, like, a green screen, and it just looks fucking awful. You can see, you're supposed to backlit whatever. The period between... <laughs> Like, when I was just getting together with BB, we weren't, like, super official. And we were both kind of seeing other people sleeping around. <laughs> well, I had, like, another lover on the side. And that was my Rwandan lover. And oh, Rwanda. Hey. He let me sit on his face and, you know, did he die? No. You know, I just figure he'll tap my ass if he needs air and that's it. I mean, Okay. I'm sorry. This reminds me. When I was. Should I? I think I'm. I think I'm done. Do you think? Okay. I think that's all I can say. I I just want to hear this little bit about the Rwandan guy, um, who who did die. This this happened behind in Arby's in 1990. And he, he is no longer with us. His final thoughts as he lay there were, I wish I had gone out in the genocide. And, and then he faded out. That's a, that's a cutback. That's a cutback to when Rwanda was in a, a civil war. Many, many people died. Press, press F. Uh, okay, here's, here's a, I want to do, do a chat thing. You guys inform me on this. Um, are Sloppy Joes good? Press one for yes. Press two for no. Uh, I I asso- mentally I associate sloppy joes with like stupid fat people. Oh my god! Holy shit! The chat is going crazy. <laughs> this question might have been too thought provoking. I wasn't expecting this. It's, it seems to be about fifty fifty. I associate sloppy joes with just like really shitty southern food. And, like it's only the thing is. Is that with good food, if you use the right ingredients and the right cooking mechanism and the right, you know, the right food stuff, you can make something taste really good, right? Or or really plain. The problem with Sloppy Joe's is that it's just white bread, pulled pork, and then barbecue sauce. So the entire thing, the the food, is only as good as the barbecue sauce. So it's just like... It's just like you're just eating A1 sauce with some meat in it, as opposed to something like, if you eat really good ribs, it's not, you don't really have that much 
Um, you don't have that much barbecue sauce on it. Isn't it pulled pork? It's minced beef. What? I thought it was pulled pork. What? Fuck you. <laughs> you're, all, you're all liars. Minced beef. Fine, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> I swear to, I swear to you, I've only, uh, it's pork. I've been fed pork, sloppy joes. I, I'll not take this abuse from my chat. <laughs> whatever. Um. All right. I kind of want to talk about low tax a little bit. Um. When we last left, low tax. We were talking to the other woman that he was with, who he had hastily promoted to chief fin chief operating officer, something like that, CEO. Um, and it was just some Mormon chick, or well, we call her the bipolar or borderline personality disorder Mormon chick from, because she's from Utah. She's from Salt Lake City. I don't think she's actually from LDS though. But he went over. He flew away from his family from his wife and child to Salt Lake City to fuck this chick on Thanksgiving week and his wife pa I'm not even sure if, yeah they were married they packed up and went to a domestic violence shelter with her, uh, the kid and the dogs and then Morgan comes back or Logan comes back from Salt Lake City with him and they try and make it work for a couple months and it, it completely falls apart and now low tax is in a position where he has to have a divorce and two different custody battles in Missouri court um, at the same time that his own forum is f kicking him out because uh, Logan said that he's abusive, which makes her the third woman, I think, to come out and say that he has been physically abusive. And apparently, for whatever reason... They didn't trust the Canadian and they didn't trust the Asian woman, but they did trust the white woman from Salt Lake City. So I guess everyone on something awful is xenophobic and racist. That's the only thing I can come up with. Um, it's well, maybe it is like Sharia. I I made this joke to to Dick because Dick was on low taxes side very fervently. I said, how many in Sharia court? Three women saying that the guy is abusive would would fly because you need three women's testimonies to match one man. So even even in Sharia court. That's enough. That's enough uh, anecdotal evidence to say that yeah, this guy probably did do this. Um, and I suppose it's the same way in something awful. It took three different people to say it before they were convinced. And now he's in the custody case, and I want to kind of give you an overview of how this divorce and custody battle is going. Uh, from what I understand, Lotax does not have direct access to either of his kids right now which includes the older one and the toddler age one that he had with the um, the Canadian woman that's he's currently divorcing. Uh, so the child in both of those custody cases was assigned a guardian ad litem, which is a person assigned by the government to look after the interests of the child. So in, in family law cases, you can't really trust either parent to be impartial in deciding what is best for the child. So... Um, in most cases, they will assign a guardian ad litem at the expense of the of the parents um, to decide what should be done for the child. And if they're a lawyer, which they usually are, they can also file motions on behalf of the child. Um, and that's kind of what's been happening. I've been following this, and this week has been unusually active for the divorce case. Uh, notably... The guardian ad litem for, uh, to, to be clear, the woman is named Dana Outlaw, which is a really cool fucking name for a person to be uh, in a legal capacity. It's a really nice name for like a, a lawyer and attorney. But she's the guardian ad litem representing both of the children and both of the proceedings against low tax. And in both of them, she has filed for a restraining order against low tax. So her determination as a supposedly impartial member of, uh, of the government looking out for the interests of the child 
is uh, this guy should have no contact with these people. And that's in t mostly because we believe that in one of the few cases that he had um, custody, visitation, or you know, temporary custody, it's like a weekend visit thing, he live streamed while completely fucked up on wine while the child was with her grandparents. So in the one time that Lotex did have custody of the child, who I think was uh, Ashley, the older one, uh, he kind of just dumped her on his mother and then got really fucked up and streamed it. So now you have this evidence here that Lotex, during his custody time, has been spent completely sloshed with uh, his kid nowhere to be seen. And that's been used against him in this custody battle. So he's he, because he decided to get drunk and stream, he's going to probably lose custody of both his kids, but still be held financially culpable for, for supporting them. Um, and he's going to have an uphill battle, even though he's hired one of the most expensive family law attorneys in the entire country, one of the most um, uh, well-regarded law firms for family law in the entire country. He's going to be have to pay for that. He's going to have to pay for this Dana outlaw chick to fuck him over, basically. And it's entirely because he couldn't stop streaming like a like a retard while while having custody of his kids. So, uh, I've been I've been following that. I kind of want to show you what she looks like because I found this funny. Um, kind of a I couldn't find a really high quality picture, but she is perhaps. She is perhaps the, you know how like the, um, the, the kennel club, the American kennel club has like dog breed standards and they measure all the dogs against this breed standard, which is like a imaginary dog. That's a perfect dog. She is like the American female clubs dog breed standard for the Karen. Just look at the haircut. Look at the glasses. Look at the, the, she has it set. She, she is the Omega Karen, and she's going to completely fucking ruin Lotex's entire life <laughs> because she, she, she's the final boss of any type of, any manager, any, any Starbucks employee. You don't want to see this chick walk in. She is the manager. She's ascended. Um, okay, and now this is the judge. This I also found very funny. I find it funny, number one, that this guy is younger looking than, than the Karen, than Dana Outlaw. Um, he also looks like the only black guy in the entire world who likes Star Wars and plays Dungeons and Dragons. He's nerdy as fuck. Um, he's quite young, but there's a person in the thread named Waffle who is a Missouri attorney. And he has, he or she, I don't know the gender, um, they have privileged access to... Missouri court documents and, and they they know these people they know who Dana Outlaw is and they know who this guy Kenneth is and they know how they how they work and Dana Outlaw is apparently vicious and will be actively if they get actively involved in a case like emotionally invested in it it's, it doesn't bode well for the person she's up against and Kenneth is a pushover apparently so anything that Dana files in the in the any motion she submits to Kenneth is basically going to get passed, and then in the appellate court above them, the judge is a woman, um, and is noted or has a reputation of being a bit of a man hater. So low tax is is really fucked here. Um, if this person, if Waffles is true to his word, uh, he's really he's really managed to completely and totally obliterate his chances of retaining custody of his children, which is probably for the best because he doesn't seem to care. The only time I've ever seen him, usually when you talk to, to like a parent, they'll always kind of sneak in that, you know, the, the children are the, the light of my life. I love my children more than I'm a father first and a, and a Patriot second. And then I, I'm a carpenter or whatever. That's like their biography. I've never heard low tax talk about his fucking kids. Unless he's trying to prove haters wrong on the internet. Uh, so if he really doesn't give a fuck, maybe it's for the best that he loses custody. Because he... I don't know. Oh, I'm a bastard, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of biased. I, I had opportunities to know my father, but I, I, never, I never had any interest in it. Um, so 
I I can I can imagine that they would grow up better without low tax if he is that much of a retard. But I don't know. Maybe people would disagree. Maybe people in in split homes would say that they wish they had both parents and shit, even if their dads were pill popping junkie retards. Don't I don't have the life experience to <laughs> to venture into that territory. Yo, know, you're my father. We're all you're, we're all your father. Okay, that works. Josh has daddy issues. I don't think so. Broken home. No, 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 no. I, uh... F Josh finds a new dad's room? No. I've n I've never been cut up over it. I don't know if that's because I'm like a Spurg, and I don't, I don't seek out, like, relationships or what, but... Uh, I think his I, his kids will probably resent him for it. I think because women tend to be more like that. I think women will will blame their fathers for not being more involved in their life if they had the opportunity to. For his guys, I think uh, I don't know. Jordan Peterson, I, you know, I should have fucking visited Jordan Peterson because he was in Belgrade undergoing some weird treatment. He wouldn't be that interesting, I guess, because he's had like a his brain was inflamed and the it. Because it was bigger than usual, it pressed against the skull and caused him brain damage. So um, I would have to talk to someone with severe brain damage on top of being a CIA glow-in-the-dark. But I don't know. It would have been interesting, I guess. Uh, did you hear the story of the man who found out his three sons were not his? I think at a certain point, you just have to be willfully ignorant. Like, how do you, how do you have three kids that aren't yours and not get suspicious of it at all? Oh, he's too big brain for a skull. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> um, the other thing that's interesting, I guess, besides the low tax stuff, because low tax is just fucked, and I kind of wanted to make fun of them. If um, when these legal proceedings are over, and I kind of feel that low tax is, you know, he's lost the form. He still hasn't sold that, as far as I know. I haven't heard any updates on that. If it has changed, let me know. But once that's done, if that's ever done, once the legal cases are done, I will probably do a stream on low tags because I, I at least this um at least the ending of it because I'm only familiar with him uh, due to the forum. So 2012, 2013 is when I started knowing who low tax was, and that's all I can speak on really. But I think it would be interesting. It would be an interesting stream topic. And I feel like I could cover that in about an hour. I watched the documentary about him at the uh, the goon meet. I think it's the it's called the Internet Make Made Me Stupid. I'm pretty sure that's the name. The Internet Made Me Stupid, and uh, it was pretty interesting. It's interesting to see what kind of a person he was and what his perspectives were, and the 2000s, the early 2000s when that convention happened, versus how he is now. And just how how different he looks physically, because he looks so decrepit now. He looks so pathetic. By who? It's just uh, it's just some goon, some goons with some cameras recorded the convention. Um, that happened at like the peak of something awful. I want to say it's like two thousand six, two thousand eight, around there. And uh, I don't know. It's just interesting. You meet a couple of people that are famous um, from the site. Uh, people who who had falls from a graze, uh, low tax himself is pretty prominent in the video. And uh, I don't know. Speaking of, by the way, I I want to see this documentary called "Feels Good Man" by I don't know who it's by, but it's a documentary about Pepe. And I don't know. That might be fun to to watch together on like a little Cal TV. We'll stream it together and have some hot takes but apparently it's like unironically good like not even like a joke good this make this movie makes you stupid a something awful documentary that's it watch that if you're if you want to see some clips of vintage low tax before he got all pilled out uh someone asked that i talk about this so i will i kind of want to leafy got banned if you remember leafy he got chased off the internet by content cop a long time ago, just completely dropped everything he was doing. And he briefly came back to YouTube after, um, I dubs and the Anisa stuff happened and he's already banned. He's already banned from YouTube. 
And that the the content cop stuff happened like four years ago, which kind of emphasizes how how much things have changed in just four years. That the kind of content that Leafy put out that iDubs was putting out four years ago is already like completely unacceptable. There was no three strikes for Leafy. He just came back and started doing his videos again, and he got banned immediately. Now, like I'm some kind of I I've never the only reason why I know who uh, Leafy is is because of iDubs, but so I'm not like a fan. It's just funny to me that that's how it is. And apparently because because um, of Ethan Klein, he got banned, which I can believe. Uh, from everything that I've seen, Susan Wajiki and Ethan Klein in the H3 podcast, they have like a very um, friendly relationship and she seems to take marching orders from him. Um, like they... One of the big changes that YouTube did after a certain point was make it so that the subscriber counts round down, even for APIs. So sites that track the number of subscribers can only show like every change in thousands or something, or not even. Like if you have over a million subscribers, it rounds down to the nearest hundred thousand. So you have to lose a hundred thousand subscribers for that that change to be seen. And they're retooling their entire platform so that viewers matter less and less what you actually want to see is completely irrelevant uh and they don't want to have any more like fallouts where people unsubscribe in mass and it's a big ordeal and people watch the subscriber counts they're just going to listen to h3h3 H3 and youth can climb and they're going to ban everyone that he says to ban i guess yeah the james charles drama because that was um he was like a big makeup channel or something and he had millions of subscribers and even though it was completely divorced from like internet drama how we think of it uh it ha it was probably so normy and so big in the normy sphere that youtube was forced to act if it was just weirdos being weirdos they wouldn't have cared but james charles a makeup channel being canceled on their platform in real time was a bit too much for the for the higher ups, for the advertisers, and that's what it is. The advertisers know this and, and got rid of it. You think Klein's ninety nine percent Ashkenazi? Yes, I'm sure that's why they're friends. Two hundred percent. Yeah, I don't know. I hate to tell people what they already know. Um, and, and like I said, this probably will be. A very short episode just because I don't want to fill it out by rambling but the only things I can I can think of are are this shit because uh, you know I, I've I've thought about how different things are even compared to like 10 years ago it's a completely different world you know before 2008 and now uh, before 2008 especially it's like a completely different world and then you look at before 2012, and it's a completely different world. But now even like before 2016, before the election, it's like just unrecognizable um, where the line is drawn. And, and we've regressed in so many weird ways on on speech. The the F slur is probably the weirdest thing to, to become like a, a huge problem. There is, there is no issue with the F slur a couple of years ago, and now it's one of the most... The worst things you can say online. You'll get banned from everything instantly if you say it. There's two F words. No, you can say fuck all you want. Fuck, fuck is completely... Fuck is valueless. Uh, everyone says fuck. Yeah. It, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. But I think that's it. I will take suggestions if you have something that you want to to talk about. Otherwise, I I really um I've been kind of out of it this week because I'm I'm tired. I've been doing real life stuff and I've just been like fuck it. I kind of want to do the shirt sale, um, but I've had trouble finding the the other artist from from uh, earlier this year. I don't know if they're ducking me. If they changed their opinion, they thought that Josh guy fucking sucks, but. Enthralling show, thank you. Oh, I can play this. Uh, should I? I guess I can.
Uh, where is it? Oh, it's in my Twitter stuff. Because this, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to harp on this because I've kind of said my piece, but I do want to play it. Men, men, I'm telling you, men have decided that in order to that they are so crippled with crippled with impotence that they have created the antithesis of what they believed so crippled with loneliness and impotence. This is men I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. This is our this is our version of Fight Club. 20 years later, men are so crippled with impotence and loneliness that they have created the antithesis of what they believe to be a man and they project constantly and at all times that this boogeyman is lying in wait mm -hmm. to prey upon what they see as the most virtuous thing for a man to defend which is women children and family so at all times they are screaming about the red scare pedo 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 you guys don't do a goddamn thing to protect children ever in your fucking lives i am sorry to be the bearer of reality for you men Men, I'm telling you, men have. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, his his point is that being angry about what is obvious exploitation of children, um, is is a red scare. And I, I don't think that's true. Uh, he says the opposite of what the things most worth protecting are women, family, and children, and it's like, yeah, like yeah, that's kind of that's kind of built in. To like the survival instinct of of human beings is that a man protects women, family, and children. That, that is that is the core concept of what a guy does. That's is it, it's, that that is the homestead, and the the problem is is that you can't. I mean, you you can't literally kill everyone that you want to. So you, you have to be active in. Like demonizing people and discouraging them, uh, and not enabling them to to be horrific threats. Uh, like if there was ever a time where Digibro was a non-offender, uh, not likely to offend, that time is over now because he's surrounded himself with rich and powerful people who tell him that there's nothing wrong with him, and accept his total bullshit lies about what he's into unquestioningly at face value and i have no idea what dick gets out of it i have no clue what what he sees in someone like digibro that's like yeah I, I have to uh embolden this however i can uh, and the the only th you know the only conclusions that you can draw from something like that are really negative um which i don't want to to, to stretch to and think about but when pe I, if people do I, I can't I mean they're fair to and that's what I mean I, I told him and I, I said you can't you can't ever shake away that kind of uh, stigma once it's attached to you uh, you just can't so I don't I don't understand why he would put it out there it's like sure he's not going to lose everything overnight but it will it it will lay the foundation for what will uh, end him eventually if he's not careful. He it, he it, it, it can't get rid of it. <sighs> I'm acting stupid. Okay. The yeah, I don't know. His whole point, like, don't even bother. Don't even bother, because you 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 yourself as an individual can't do anything. Um, is is a notion that I fundamentally reject. It's just wrong. Are there any people that I want to do streams on that I haven't had time? Um, not really. The big problem with doing a spotlight is because I do them live. And I wouldn't, I would not want to do like a documentary style video on anyone is that you have to find people who, who number one, that I care a little bit about. If I try to do streams on people, I don't care that much about it. It sucks. It's not entertaining. 
Um, the other problem is is that they have to be one to two hours long. If they're if they're too short, there's no point. If they're too long, um, then I can't make it a stream. I, w I would gasp myself trying to uh, go over everything. So the list of people that are interesting that I can sum up in an hour to two hours live is very short. Low tax is one, but low tax is developing. Bob Chandler. Bob Chandler was in a little cow though. And what can you say about Bob that hasn't, you know, hasn't already been said? A log. Here's a here's a bounty. If you happen to have access to the A log stand up, and not the one that's easy to find. I'm talking about the one where A log tries to explain to a live audience in LA in like 2007 uh, who Christian Weston Chandler is. If you have that video of A log. I need you to send this to me because it has been lost to the, the sands of time and I've been looking for it for a while. It is without a doubt the most cringe thing ever, ever. It, it surpasses everything else I can think of. It is the single most awkward thing I've ever seen. It is a, it is a man at a comedy club where he is trying to explain to normal people in an audience who Chris is 10 years before Chris did anything of note. Um, it, it's so the silence is so thick and awkward that at some point in, because of how it's shot, you can see people stand up and leave children start crying. Nobody laughs the entire time. It is seven minutes of the densest, most painful shit that you could imagine because and because he's autistic um a log is he, he never picks up on it and just like does like the virgin walk out of out of the theater he just sits there and endures it and if you happen to have that video i, I would like it and it's not the it's not the one that you can easily find the painful a log stand up or whatever uh that one's bad but <laughs> there's a different one If you haven't gotten your hoodie yet, you need to email the the disbursement guys or email me. I don't know. I, everyone should have it by now. You don't even know who A-Log is? <laughs> That's another funny thing. All the fucking people like Ralph are using the word A-Log and they don't even, like, I don't, I don't even think they know the origins of it. It's not just being mad. Uh, there's something very specific to it. <laughs> A-Log was someone who, way back when, got extremely angry at Chris for being for giving autistics like him a bad name. And he said, what Chris has done for autistic people is potatoes compared to what Saddam did in the Gulf War. Those are two things that he said, in honest, uh, to try and try and explain to people how how much he hated Christian Weston Chandler. And that's a logging is something very 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 specific. It's when you take a funny silly person and you try to make them out to be a bad guy because they did something you don't like, especially if you don't actually care. Like Chris said a lot of homophobic and racist stuff when he was um younger in his twenties because Bob was like an old Southern guy, so he picked up a lot of like the Southern racism and and homophobia. Uh, and just kind of reiterated it because that's what Pop Pop said, right? And he took the he he took those things and he tried to make Chris out to be like some kind of devil incarnate because he had uh he had said homophobic and racist things. And it's just like he's a, he's a retard. <laughs> You're getting angry over what a retard believes. Why do you give a shit? Why why do you pretend to care? That's a logging. Completely different than just being a, being um an asshole to someone online completely different young chris is best chris yes i've said before but i would probably when when barb dies i'll probably have to fly out to virginia and help chris and figure out what the fuck to do with him because that estate is is underwater She's taken out several divorce. I had Chris when in the brief time when I was in Ukraine and we were talking. I had Chris go into his uh into the, the living room and steal her mail basically and tell me what the the values of her loans were. 
and she has like two, like three different reverse mortgages, which means that the house was paid off. But to pay off her consumer debt, she has sold the house or taken out a loan using the house as collateral. So she has taken consumer debt, which you can bankrupt out of and lose uh, nothing except your credit score and converted that into debt leveraged by the property. So if she does go bankrupt now, she loses her home. Um, never, ever use a reverse mortgage to pay off consumer debt. That's fucking retarded. But she's she's like a proper... Um, like, if you ever watch that South Park episode where it's QVC, they're making fun of television retailers and talking about how they take advantage of old people. She's one of those. She's one of those people who just buys absolute fucking trash off QVC all the time and has buried her buried the legacy of Bob in garbage. She has taken everything that he did leading up to his death to make sure that his son would never have to worry about money, never have to worry about a place to live and has spent that on QVC call. Now only three remaining fucking trash. And it's really sad. So, um, when the time comes, I, I kind of want to help Chris, and that'll be the last, probably the last thing I do for him, if he, unless he seriously commits to a plan. Um, and I'll wash my hands of that. Uh, I kind of feel like I owe him a little bit of help, but I don't know. I'm a weirdo like that. Uh, I just hope that when when she does die, I think there won't be any way to keep the house. And I know he has autism and he's lived in that house his entire life. And it's like, is Chris, would Chris be able to deal with moving from 14 branch land court? Cause I don't see any way for him to keep the home. It's just not, not possible with the debt that she's accrued because it's in the name of her. Um, and when she dies, the estate just has to be bankrupt. It's like, Chris, they're going to have to take everything out of the house that isn't explicitly yours. They're going to bulldoze the house because you can't sell it in this state, you know. And someone is going to buy the property at $20,000. That money is going to go directly to the bank and they're going to build something else on it. The man has to be committed. Yeah, I, I don't know what else can be done for Chris. Um, he messaged me some time ago and he said that he wanted, I shouldn't say this. He wanted help and he, he asked me to do something, um, which is illegal in every country in the world. <laughs> I'll, I'll say it like that. It's a crime that's illegal everywhere and always has been. And I told him, Chris, I cannot do that. But if there's someone causing you problems who has control over your accounts, I can help you reclaim those, uh, accounts from him. And he, he, he didn't take my offer and I don't know what happened. He seemed very rushed to resolve this issue and then immediately had nothing more to say about it. And, uh, <laughs> I, I haven't heard from him since. And so I, he's, he's very strange. And I think he has people in real life who are fucking with him again. Cause the thing is, and the reason why Chris can't be helped right now is that Chris has this mindset where the only people he is willing to talk to and allow to interact with him are people who further this perpetual daydream that he's in. Um, if you're not willing to play a part in the daydream, then you're not, th then you upset him and he will turn from you. He'll ice you out completely. But because of this, the people who are most willing to play up to the daydream, to the fantasies, are people who are deeply mentally unwell, who have no problem spending six hours a day role-playing with Chris about these fantasies and encouraging him and shaping the direction that they go. So by the, the, the rules of the game, you can either be a full-time handler of Chris, or you can be... Um, nothing to him. And it's, it's extremely frustrating because it, it started happening after we got idea guy out. Um, he started saying, you know, like I wanted to, I want to get this discord server up. I want to invite all the famous, my little pony. And it's true that there are a lot of people in the anime 
and My Little Pony fandoms who are huge fans of Chris and who actually want to like covet his attention, not because they care about Chris, but because they think it's funny. Like, oh, can you do a drawing of my pony OC? Can you do, do a drawing of my girlfriend's pony OC? She's such a big fan of Sonichu. Can you draw her something? It's like that kind of shit. And there are all these fucking check marks in the anime and My Little Pony communities who just take advantage of him because he's a fan of theirs and then they fuck him over because they'll play along with this bullshit and once he has famous my little pony people playing along with his game then he doesn't have to listen to people who won't play along with it because he's got he's already got the attention that he wants and that has seriously fucked him over the internet has completely destroyed any possibility that chris had of living a normal life uh it's it, it's very frustrating because it's like i i know that there are ways that Chris could stabilize himself. He is now legitimately so famous that if he could just sit down to doing a couple commission drawings and stream appearances and stuff, because in the brief period where I was able to, to, to handle him and get him stream appearances and stuff, like people are willing to pay for his attention in a way that's not harmful to him. Um, but there has to be some level of involvement there because he can't, he can't make those decisions on his own. So... I don't know. It's it's it is immensely frustrating to see um him him in the the position that he is in and knowing the position that he will be in the moment that Barb dies and not being able to help because he has chosen these conditions for association that I I refuse on principle to to be with. I I, I just refuse. I know I could. Like right now, if I wanted to to text him and do the whole make believe shit with him, I I could easily become the next Chris Handler. Like right now, but I just I refuse. Not only out of principle, but out of time. Like he'll text me at like three a.m. with a a huge huge screen and he loves doing it over text too so he'll sit there and write up a 20 sms message text chain and with his thumbs uh, and i hate texting i hate phones in general so i'm just imagining me trying to write a fucking reply to these to these text messages um in the, that are miles long and 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 then <laughs> I remember when he was having trouble with the idea, guys. I said, Chris, don't give out my number. And then, of course, I'm fucking... Uh, I'm sitting there in Ukraine, and I get a call, and it's from a, a Washington, D.C. phone number from a, a federal investigator that he just gave my my Ukrainian plus four, uh, 380 phone number to, to to talk about the idea guy shit. And I'm just like, Chris, I told you not to give that number out to people. And he just immediately gives it out to, to a fucking a glow in the dark. I'm like, Chris, you're not making this easy for me. I'm trying my best here. <laughs> We're really, you gotta, you gotta help me help you at some point. Oh man. FM, I don't know. That would be the appropriate adult reaction. Like, yeah, fuck it. He's on his own. But I, I feel bad. I feel bad. I and it, 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 it's a mixture of things. It's number one. It's me being empathetic for him. The other thing is that logically, I know there are things that he could do that if he could commit to, he would be all right, and he would be all right for a long time because he could make enough money to to set up things. And I think he could make so much money, and I think there's a way to plan it where he would never lose his social security disability. Like if he was in an LLC and that LLC made money, it would be possible to pay him exactly the amount of money that would allow him to keep social security disability. And then you could use the money in the LLC to set up a retirement account, health insurance, anything. And it's like, I know there are ways to work within this system to, um, to enable him to go forward, but it won't happen entirely because of this, this problem, which does not exist for anyone. It, it it is a problem unique to Chris. There is no one else in the entire world who shares the set of problems that Chris does, where he has a make believe universe that other people are in, that that they influence, that they willingly partake in, because he is internet famous. There is no one in the history of the world to be in the precise situation that Chris is in, and it's it's 
it's such a it's such a challenge perhaps that's why i find it worth the time because I, it is a um fundamentally unique challenge that if i could solve for him i would feel very good about uh so if you if you're not if you're not one to believe that i'm truly generous then that is a perhaps a more logical explanation for it I don't want to be his white knight. I just want to. I just want to fix this. <laughs> I have a plan. He just has to stick to the plan. What did he ask me to do? I'm not going to say. If you can't figure that out, you don't need to know. You're too stupid. It's very obvious from what I've told you. Uh, a twenty-year plan, exactly. Almost. It's like it's been like eight years now since I've opened the forum. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, seven going on eight. Uh, I'm I'm halfway through my twenty year plan to uh, stabilize Chris. To <laughs> 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 <sighs> stream on Sargon? No, no. Uh, any other requests? that I can talk about I, I'm, just, I'm trying I'm trying to I'm trying to be fun loving <laughs> it's very difficult it's very difficult to be fun loving so when the next space station 13 I, dude space station 13 is being ruined for me by the tides of rainbow and yellow and and pink and blue those colors are ruining the space station 13 for me it's very it's very frustrating to play when you know the admins are are just totally paused. Vosh, oh that would be fun to play actually. Who ha someone in my Discord, give me the Vosh clip of him and Destiny arguing. It's like it's only like a minute long, but it's worth playing. I think that's also a. Uh... No, I don't have that in my tweets. Send it to me on Discord now. I'll play it. Motherfuckers better not let me down. <laughs> Sorry, this is dead air. Oh, oh, this is it. This is from before. This is Destiny and Vosh arguing, and this clip was pretty funny. I don't know what incident led to the person with the bag chasing the guy with the gun. Uh, he uh -huh. threw, it looked like a bag with a Coke bottle in it. Uh, and uh -huh. then uh, he missed, he continued chasing, and the man with the gun turned around and unloaded into him. How many shots did he fire? Was it just one, or was it more than one? I think it was more than one, but I would have to go back. Uh, chat, if you want to link the video, I can take a look at it again. Okay, yeah. um, so, so three or four is what I've heard. Okay, yeah. um, so just being clear, so three or four shots, um, I saw two people have been shot, so I'm assuming that's true. Yeah. Um, I would say that in that case, yeah, I would say that self-defense is justified. Really? Even though Minnesota is not a stand-your-ground state? Do you want to talk moral or legal? Which uh, one do you want to talk? Okay, morally, do you think if you're being chased down by an unarmed person? Um, Wisconsin, sorry, not Minnesota, my bad. Um, do you think okay. that, um, do you think being chased down by a person, if you have a firearm, means that you're morally justified in shooting them? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> you, don't, you don't believe in, like, escalation look, of force? Wait, like, wait. There needs to be a demonstration. Look, look, at, uh, look at his reaction to that. You don't you don't believe in Wait. like morally justified in shooting them? Absolutely, yes. Look, just look at that like disbelief. Like I can't believe I can't believe Destiny would disagree with me. You don't you don't believe in like escalation of force? Like there needs to be a demonstration of lethal escalation of force before you're allowed <clears throat> to respond in kind or if you're brandishing a firearm and somebody's charging you anyway, I think it's fair to assume that that person likely has lethal intent. They could be carrying a knife, or they could be planning to take your firearm from you and kill you with it. Um, you have no way of knowing that. It's not your responsibility to know that. If you're trying to comply with what I would consider a moral duty to retreat, which it seems like he was, he was running away, but another person is charging after you regardless, um, by the time you've ascertained whether or not they have like a, a knife or something, you're probably likely already going to die. So yeah, I think that you have a, a, a right to defend yourself in that circumstance. Yeah. That's a... Uh... 
pretty shocking. When he says escalation of force, it does remind me of Space Station 13. Because it's like if someone if someone's pushing you, if someone if someone has aggressed you by pushing everything that I talk about now has to be made in association to Space Station 13. So when we talk about the gun debate, we talk about gun control, we talk about stand your ground. We have to talk about what it would be like in a space station first before I can even begin to comprehend it. Uh, so in Space Station 13, if someone someone was standing there and you, for instance, you were the clown and you're thinking, I'm going to slip this guy with a banana peel. So you slip him. And then he 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 decides after you slipped him that he's going to take his toolbox and hit you with it with with malicious with harm intent. Then you are in in kind able uh, to to push him onto the table and start beating him in the face and kicking him. That is that is escalation of force. Now you may argue that perhaps in real life things are a bit different. And if you are charging someone who has a gun, with you, maybe you can shoot them. I don't know. But Vosh. Vosh saying that there has to be escalation of force. Like, how does he imagine that going into it? He has to be like a Space Station 13 thing. Like, the guy runs up and then pushes you, and then your gun drops to the ground, and you're on the ground, and then there's that chance of you picking it back up. But if he picks it up, then you have to push him back to try and get it back. Like, that's Vosh's mind. It's like slapstick. So there's clowns running around in the fucking streets of Wisconsin trying to slip people on banana peels. So we have to consider the escalation of force. I I I would have to disagree. I think that I don't know. It's weird. Destiny Destiny is weird because he he argues things that make sense, and then he argues for complete bullshit. And I think Destiny is skeeving or is kind of moving to the right on certain issues. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know. I'm afraid of this decade. This decade is going to be real fucked up. I can tell. I'm sure that's not new new information to anyone, but it it does make me worry. Because uh, again, you look at 2016, you look at Leafy's here, you look at all the things that you used to be able to say no problem, uh, which would now get you completely blackballed from the entire financial industry. How how bad is it going to be in four years from now in 2024? That's going to be the real fucked up election because I, I guarantee I, I'm pretty sure Trump's going to win this one, but. When there's that power vacuum for Trump, I don't know. I, I'm really, I'm genuinely afraid of what we can expect by 2024. Because I guarantee you, everything is going to be worse, and that presidential election is going to be a, a, a sort of nightmare that the country has never experienced ever since, like the Civil War, at least. 2024 will be the end. Are they going to play dramatic music as as people run down hills screaming? There can be only one with uh, AR-15s and and uh, those those giant purple dildos that they use in Saints Row. Twenty twenty four will be back to status quo. That's a that's an even worse prediction than Civil War. That's the worst thing I can think of. Oh, <laughs> so someone mentioned it. Uh, I guess I'll talk about this too, and I'll wrap it up. I, I let me double check. I don't want to say it because it scares me. Um, I think Laura Loomer has won the Republican nominee for Florida's twenty-first congressional district. Yes, she has. She is the nominee for the twenty-first congressional district in Florida. Can you fucking believe it? I mean, I don't know. What is what is is twenty first is twenty first the one that's um Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, Delray, Miami Dade. Oh, it's moved since then. I was gonna say if it's in Miami Dade, she doesn't stand a fucking chance. Even now, she doesn't stand a chance. It's ninety nine point forty four percent urban. I guarantee you, a Democrat, uh, a Republican is not gonna win in this district, but it is. Horrifying to think about the the chance <laughs> that uh, Laura Loomer could be a congressperson. But then again, she'd fit right in. It wouldn't be that much of a change, would it? What's the importance of that? Uh, in the U.S., urban areas almost always vote for 
for Democrats. Uh, Republicans very seldom win urban areas. Especially in places like Southern Florida. Southern Florida should pretty much be its own state. Just everything south of Tallahassee. Just cut it off. Call it uh, Hispaniola or something. <laughs> just make it its own thing. Though the issue with that, and I've discussed this at great length with like-minded people, the issue with making a 51st state is that then we would have 102 Congress people and we'd have to change the flag. And everyone agrees that going from 100, or not Congress people, but senators, going from 100 senators to 102 senators and 51, which is I'm pretty sure is a prime number, that change is not kosher. That is a border gore situation. All the numbers become bad, and we can't do it. We'd have to add several states at once to get to 110 senators and um, 50, 55 stars. That would be a better number. That's divisible by 11, so it's not prime. Uh, this is our way forward. This is our plan for peace. <laughs> we're going to have to add. We're going to have to break California up into a couple states. We're going to have to break Florida up into two states. We're going to have to add Puerto Rico. And if we do that all at once, it'll be okay. And we won't have to deal with prime numbered flag stars and 102 senators. And th and this is the most important thing is that we had <laughs> we had this discussion a couple episodes ago about um about one of the Canadian provinces trying to cede into into the United States. And if we let Alberta become a part of the United States, our our country our country would would have this border this would this would be the border for the united states if alberta joined us and it's just like we that is fucking ridiculous it looks like minnesota is wearing a pickle hob that is preposterous there is no way that we can allow that to happen because then you would be talking about 51 stars 102 senators and the pickle hob all at once that would be <laughs> the absolute worst scenario it'd be better to add puerto rico over that Oh, I said I said Minnesota instead of Montana. Oops, <laughs> whoops, bit of a difference. Yeah, British Columbia. That's the thing. That that's truth. The person who said if we took British Columbia, and uh, is that Nunavut, the one on the far west? What is that? Nunavut. Fuck you, Yandex. Always oh, fucking with me. Here, I'm gonna look this up on Google because for some reason. Yandex does not want me to search that. No, that's not Nunavut. What the fuck is that? What state is that above uh, British Columbia? Yukon. Okay, we'll get British Columbia and Yukon, and that'll be fine. And then we can split Florida in half and add Puerto Rico. Bam, boom. Perfect, perfect. Borders are good. Flag is good. Senators are good. I make it so. All right. They can have California. <laughs> Albert, hey, Albertans are fucking based. They they dig oil and that's it. They have oil. Nothing else needs to be said. All right. All right, all right. Anything else? Anything else? Yeah, Alberta has oil. I'm not playing Sekiro. I tried. I, I, I don't like the, the, the dark, dark Souls shit. I don't know the only OnlyFans game. I'll look at it. But... What is the OnlyFans drama? Some, okay, inform me of it. Because I'm curious what the fuck you're talking about. I've not been, I've not been told this. Uh, max a hundred dollars per pay pig tip is that the only fans drama is that it bella florin made two million i don't care <laughs> i can't even i can't even be uh pretend to care about what retards are giving their money up to because if the retards weren't buying like only fan titty pictures they'd be in casinos or something they would find they would find an adequate way to waste their money they They'd be buying anime posters. You know, they, they would waste it on something else. 
Open on OnlyFans. <laughs> okay, fuck it. I'm done. Sorry I didn't have more, but I, I found a way to stretch it out by yelling about Canada. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys later. And and pray for low tech because he's gonna get raped in court. Well, let's take it easy. I'm not done. I'm not done with Wing yet. 